so here we are seeking Jesus again. We're looking for him. We want to know who he is. That's what we're doing every day when we look to him. Let's acknowledge him, Jesus. We acknowledge you and your presence here today. We thank you for showing us who you are, what you're thinking, and the things that we need to know, especially to have eternal life with you. Love you and praise you and give you all the glory. So Jesus was talking to me today about looking for him. That so many are, are thinking that he's hiding, and he's not. He's not. He wants you to know him. He wants you to find him. He, he's not someone who will force his will on you. As the Holy Spirit once said to me, he's a gentleman. He's going to knock. He's going to knock at your heart. Hello, I'm here. Can I come in? Will you, will you look for me? Will you trust me? I gave my life for you. He did. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to show us who he is. And Jesus laid down his life for us. And this morning, he was talking to me about having to talk people into, I just did a message like that, have to talk people into um, the fact that he is good and he is the way. So in Matthew 7, it says, Ask and the gift will be yours, verse 7. Seek and you will discover. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who is persistent, for every persistent one will get what he asks for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for. And everyone who knocks persistently one day will find that open door. Do you know of a parent who would give his hungry child who asked for food a plate of rocks instead? Or when asked for a piece of fish, would a parent offer his child a snake instead? Or if imperfect as you are, if you, imperfect as you are, know how to lovingly take care of your children then and give them what's best, how much more ready is your Heavenly Father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask him? And that's what he's saying today. He, he wants to do so much for you. But you're not seeking him. You're not looking for him. You're not meditating that word that he gave you. Who is him? He is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word is God. He is his word, John 1.1. 1, 1. And he's saying, if you would just seek me, you would find me. If you would look to me, I could give you that answer. But you're so distracted. You're so preoccupied with the things of this world. With the thought of not enough time. I don't have time. If he wants to, have you heard this? Have you, I've heard people say this. If, if he wants to heal me, he will. If he wants to this or that, he will. God wants to do all those wonderful things for you. But the thing is, you don't believe that he can or he will or he wants to if you're not seeking him, if you're not looking to him. If you have another source and it's not him, then, well, that's your source. And you don't, what you're really saying by not saying, not even saying it, what you're saying is that he won't. You don't believe that he can because you're looking elsewhere. Um, if you're thinking God doesn't talk to you or wants to talk to you, but you haven't sought him, then how do you really know? 
how do you really know? So you're thinking a lie. And most people think that lie because they haven't taken the time to seek him. Seek and you will find. If your child was knocking at the front door, would you not let them in? Of course you would. And God is saying, just knock. And Jesus already said, I'm knocking at the door of your heart, but you're not answering. You're looking to other sources. You're not looking to me. And when you don't look to me, I am not going to pressure you. I'm here. I have everything you need. Seriously, he's your source. He, he's everything you need. He created you in his likeness. He knows exactly what you need. He knows what you're thinking. He knows your heart. And he's in love with you. And he's saying to some of you today, that you're just not looking to him. As a child would look to his parent, you're not looking to him. You're thinking you can handle things on your own. You're thinking you know it. You know it all. You don't need him. He's too far off. It's too much trouble. It takes too much time. As soon as you sit down to seek him, the enemy's going to come. Jesus said that. As soon as you hear the word, He's going to come, and if you don't understand that, you want to understand anything. The enemy is coming to steal God from you. But when you know, when you know the word of God, when you seek to know the word of God, you're going to know the enemy's ploys. And you're going to know that he's pulling the rug out from under you when you give in to his lies. You're going to know his lies. What Jesus is saying is when you take the time to look at the word, he is his word, then you're seeking him. When you, when you take the time, when you sit down and, and meditate on even what he said to know what he's saying to you, you're going to have revelation knowledge. That's seeking him. It's not just a, a quick... Um, Look around and, oh, I don't see him. When when um, my husband or my son, when they're looking for something in the kitchen or, or somewhere, they go, oh, I looked and I didn't see anything. But when I go and look for them, I move everything around. I pull everything out. And I find that thing that I knew that was there. But they couldn't find it because... Impatience. Mom will do it for me. She'll do it for me. And that's how it is with Jesus. We're expecting, some of you are expecting um, people to do it for you. You don't have time. You, you don't want to take the time to look. And if you don't look, you're giving up the precious pearl, the most important thing really in your life to be seeking and finding if you miss that, they're going to miss eternal life. And so by not taking the time, Jesus not being important enough to you to sit down and take time with him, you're going to miss it. Jesus said, I'm coming, watch and pray. Many aren't watching and praying. Many say, say the prayer, Jesus, come live on the inside of me, but then they're too busy seeking other things. And he's just beckoning you today. I just hear him saying, talk them into looking for me. Don't, don't depend on what someone else thinks, someone else's opinion. But look for him. Remember Matthew 7, 21 through 23, or maybe you don't know it. He said, not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. And many are going to say, well, but Lord, how about comparing it to, but Mom, I looked in the refrigerator. I didn't see it anywhere. 
But Lord, we did this, we did that. He's going to say, I didn't know you. Did someone else get to know him for you? Have you taken someone else's word for who he is? I didn't know you. You who practice lawlessness away from me. You can't know his will if you don't know him. You can't know someone if you don't take the time to know him. And this is just the most important thing, is take the time to know Jesus, get to know him. He is his word, so you start with a word. Don't ask what someone thinks. Don't ask their opinion. Because the enemy's going to take advantage of that. And, and maybe, you know, you have some good sources, but you have to know Jesus for yourself. Otherwise, he's going to say, I didn't know you. Have we talked? Have we met? He said to the five foolish virgins who didn't get ready, he said, I'm not acquainted with you. But Lord, they're still calling him Lord and knocking at the door and saying, let us in, let us in. But they didn't get ready. They weren't prepared. And Jesus is warning us over and over again, get ready, I'm coming. Prepare, the hour is near. The time is short. You know, and, and day after day after day goes by and people will get discouraged and think, oh, I'm not getting ready. I'm not going to get ready. He's not coming. I have time. You can't get in by the skin of your teeth. You can't get in at the last minute. There, at the last minute, there's many things to do before he gets here. He corrected me once when I, I went on, I guess you could call it a little vacation. And um, at that time, things started, blessings were dissipating in my life. And then I saw him, Lord, what's happening? And he, he corrected me sternly. And he said, I asked you to do this, I asked you to do that, I asked you to do this, and you're not doing any of them. And you're like one of the five foolish virgins, which means you're not going to make it. And when I tell people that, they look at me like, hmm, that, that sounds really harsh. But really what Jesus is saying is, you're rejecting me. If you love me, you're going to care about me. Your life is going to be about me. It's not going to be about stuff. It's not going to be about things. It, it, it's not going to be about being on vacation. But you're going to know that he's grieving. See, you haven't sought him. That's why you don't know. He's not holding out. When you seek me, you'll find me. When you knock, I'm going to answer the door. When I knock at your door, you're going to answer me. Because you care about what I care about. Because you love me. Because you've invested time to get to know me. You see? If you don't know him, you can't move in with him because you don't know what he expects of you. But if you know him, you're going to know that. Um, you got to take your shoes off, right, when you walk in the door. That's the way it is, right? For some of us, we take off our shoes when we come in the door. We have things that we, we just, we do. We don't leave things lay around. We vacuum the set and the other thing. You might have some, some um, other kinds of standards in your house, like you don't talk back. We respect each other. In heaven, if you don't know the concept of love, then you're not going to be able to move in with them. His law is love. And when you learn his law here, you're going to be able to move in with him there. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, you're going to care about what he cares about. You're going to know that he's grieving, that many are not ready. There's few on that narrow path. And it grieves him, and he's telling you ahead of time. So, 
You have to learn who he is, what he thinks. You have to care about him to move in with him. If you don't care for him, if you don't have time for him, if you don't agree with him, even by not seeking him to even know if you agree with him, you're not going to be able to move in with him. He wants you to know that. He's not holding out. He's saying, come on. Take some time to get to know me. Seek me. I, I'm not going to lock the door. Seek me. Now is the time. Seek me. I'm going to open the door. I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. I'm going to show you how to stay on that narrow path. I'm going to heal you. I forgive you everything you need. He's going to give to you. But instead, we're running around worrying about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and what we're going to wear. And he's gonna, just going to add to you what you need. You know, and he's, he's nudging me about situation, circumstances. Like, if he tells you to do something, you know, maybe, maybe you're to that point where you do seek him and, and um, you're seeking for an answer. And um, he tells you to do something. And it seems out of reach. Don't give up. Just keep seeking him and saying, okay, how do I do this? When do I do this? Talk to me. And he will answer you. He's not holding out at you. And he's very creative in his answers. He, he's, he's, he's there. It's just that his ways are higher than our ways. And so we have to, like... Um, Find out who he is by waiting. And then when he answers, you're going to be like, oh, wow. I never thought of that. Wow, he's so smart. Well, I'm glad I waited for that answer. Seek him and you'll find him. He's not holding out on you. So that's the message I have for you today. He's the way. He's the truth. Any other way is a trick, a ploy. The enemy is trying to keep Jesus from you. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We thank you for showing us who you are and that we can seek you and that we can find you. We just give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We thank you that you want to give to us. I just pray for the people, Lord, that they would take the time now to seek you. And I thank you, Lord, that your promise is that we will find you. We will know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Now know that he is knocking at the door of your heart. He said, heed my voice. And I'll come and live on the inside of you. He's not far off. He's on the inside of you if you let him. But you got to heed his voice. That's, that's how, you're, that's how um, you're saying, I believe you. I have faith in you. I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to seek you for the answers. But if you don't heed his voice, you really don't trust or believe in him. You haven't surrendered to him. And yeah, you, you got to test it out. You got to decide, I'm going to believe. And then when you believe, sometimes it feels like you're walking on water. But when he starts leading you and you see him, when he answers you, then it's going to be so exciting for you. And you're going to want to run and tell everyone, Jesus did this. I trusted him. And he took care of me. And then you keep on seeking and keep seeking and keep seeking. And he's going to reveal himself to you more and more, more and more and more. So seek him. Submit to him. And you'll be so excited to see the manifestation of him working in your life. And you'll be on that narrow path to eternal life, living with him forever. Thanks so much for listening today. God bless you.